Hello everybody, my name is Katrina DeWitt and I'm presenting today on primary and secondary productivity for Dr. Gonzalez's ecology course at Rutgers Camden. Before understanding what primary and secondary productivity is, one must first understand what just productivity is. And while this refers to the rate of generation of biomass in an ecosystem, but who generates this biomass? Well, there are two different components. There are primary producers, which are autotrophs, and then there are secondary producers, which are heterotrophs. Autotrophs, well, these are organisms that make their own food, generally using light energy, such as photosynthesis. And they use this to make complex organic compounds, such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Heterotrophs, on the other hand, are consumers. These are organisms that cannot generate their own energy and instead have to eat other organisms. So primary productivity is the rate at which organic matter is created by photosynthesis. In fact, 99% of light is actually reflected or passes through producers without being absorbed. And that other 1% is what is absorbed by the producers that goes to photosynthesis. That 1% of light energy that goes to photosynthesis is what's called gross primary productivity, which is the total amount of carbon that is fixed by primary producers in the ecosystem. But in fact, 60% of that 1% in GPP is lost to respiration, and only 40% of that actually supports the growth and reproduction of producers. So what is the net primary productivity? Well, that is the total amount of biomass produced by plants. This is simply just GPP minus respiration. And this is very important because it represents the chemical energy available to primary consumers and it's the beginning of the energy flow through an ecosystem. And while there are many factors that affect net primary productivity, such as physical and biotic factors, there's light, because primary productivity responds to available light, rain, because the more it rains, the more primary production there is, temperatures, because the higher the temperature, the more primary productivity, and then nutrients, which nutrients fertilization actually does increase primary productivity and then there's biotic factors because well animals certainly do reduce the standing biomass. Now that I've talked about primary production, what is secondary production? Well that's just the net energy of the production of heterotrophs and this is driven by the transfer of organic material between trophic levels and represents the quality of new tissue. Secondary production is positively related to NPP and is ultimately regulated by nutrients like phosphorus. And while there are many organisms that are responsible for this, and these include animals, protists, fungi, and many different bacteria. So what happens when you combine secondary and primary production? Well, that's just the net ecosystem production. And that is the net amount of primary production after the cost of respirations by plants, heterotrophs, and decomposers. So if we look at this like a mathematical equation, we can see that NEP equals GPP minus the respiration of plants, heterotrophs, and the decomposers. And that just shows us how much of that primary production is actually happening in an ecosystem. And that's the end of my presentation, so thanks for watching.